Oh, darling, you simply must hear about the breakers in Newport, Rhode Island. Yes, my dear, this Newport, Rhode Island breakers. Oh, a breathtaking mansion by the sea, often referred to as a summer cottage. Oh, look at these views. Look at this architecture built with Italian Renaissance flair, dripping with gold and marble and all the finer things in life. Mm. And the exterior? Mm -hmm. Oh, well. <laughs> oh. I will have you know that the Salt Lake Herald wrote on July 4th, 1895, what is undoubtedly the finest cottage the world over. This great hall is 50 feet high by 50 feet wide and is inspired by an Italian courtyard. Imagine the children would play on the staircase with servant trays and riding their little tricycles through this magnificent space. <laughs> and the Vanderbilt family. Oh yes, my dear, this Vanderbilt family quid pro quo. I challenge you to comment below with a timestamp when you find the symbol of the Vanderbilt family, the acorn and the oak leaf. And I, in return, will share some serious, juicy backstory. Oh, and there is so much backstory. In fact, HBO's Gilded Age gives you just a taste. In fact, the cotillion of heiress Gladys Russell was filmed in The Breakers. I hope you don't think I'm rushing things. I do not. You conquered New York. Now it's time to conquer Newport. The Breakers was part of this backdrop to provide an authentic feel from the Gilded Age era. The show gives you a taste of what it would be like to live in this architectural dream. A pearl. And Cornelius Vanderbilt? Well, he was something else. Cornelius Vanderbilt II and his glorious wife, Alice. Cornelius' family was first known for the steamboat industry and then the railroad industry. His railroad connected New York and Chicago. And yes, they were very affluent. Now, did you know that the Breakers was first built in 1893? It replaced the original Breakers. The original Breakers was a brick and shingle, and it was destroyed by a fire that started in the kitchen. In November 1892, the fire was the result of a boiler explosion. Now, Cornelius Vanderbilt II was on a mission to avoid this flight. He commissioned Richard Morris Hunt. Yes, in fact, that is the same architect of Marble House. You can see my Marble House video link below. In fact, Marble House was built by Cornelius Vanderbilt II's younger brother, William K. Vanderbilt, and his wife, Alva Vanderbilt. And they both made the brilliant choice to choose Richard Morris Hunt to design these estates. He was the first American to study at École des Beaux-Arts in Paris. Richard Morris Hunt created this 70-room stone masonry Renaissance-styled palazzo with boilers far, far, far from the home. Hunt's design put the underground boiler room 350 feet away. And it was connected to the basement of this home, a brick-lined walkable tunnel. Mm-hmm. Heavy, heavy steel doors at each end of the tunnel that could close off the tunnel. Now, here's something juicy. This tunnel is open to the public in Beneath the Breakers Tour and explore this underground system and this amazing technology.
Now, this whimsical cottage was built with the original Breakers Mansion in 1878. It was constructed by the firm of Peabody and Stearns, and it was built adjacent to the mansion that was burned in the fire. It still remains on the property of the new mansion. It has a Queen Anne revival style, including half timbering and shingles and asymmetry. This cottage was built as a children's playhouse and served for many tea parties and activities. I love the contrast in the architecture, and I will have you know that I have even spotted Kris Kringle at this children's playhouse. And yet the Breakers was in the news again. In 1943, during World War II, the Breakers hosted a simulated air raid and rescue effort. And they had mock bombings and enemy aircraft, uh, injured people. And that tunnel, the underground tunnel, was filled with smoke, which is all part of Beneath the Breakers tour. At least 300 people participated in this drill including Red Cross workers and uh, defense volunteers, Newport firefighters, in fact, also, and, and Sea Scouts and Boy Scouts. And about 400 spectators watched and were amazed. During the Gilded Age, Newport, Rhode Island, became a very popular destination for wealthy individuals and from New York and, and many other major cities. Newport was known and is known for its lavish social scene, including extravagant parties, balls, and other events hosted by the very wealthy elite. These gatherings provided for an opportunity for socializing, networking, and displaying one's wealth and status. Luxurious mansions, many individuals built opulent summer cottages in Newport, which were actually grand, grand mansions designed by renowned architects. The Breakers, Marble House, served as symbols of their wealth and status. Now, Newport's location along the coast offered a cooler climate compared to the hot, the hot, hot cities like New York. Wealthy families often retreated to Newport to escape. They all enjoyed the sailing, yachting, polo matches, and other outdoor pursuits in Newport's scenic surrounding. Newport's appeal was heightened by its exclusivity and prestige. It became fashionable among the wealthy elite to spend summers in Newport, leading to concentration of wealth and influence in this area. Overall, Newport is a unique combination of social opportunities, luxurious accommodations, and amazing climate. But if you're not enthralled by the historical and political social scenes, and you are an architectural and art enthusiast, you will be amazed by visiting the Breakers Mansion. It is like entering a realm of unparalleled opulence with architectural grandeur. From the moment I approached its towering facades, I was captivated in sheer magnificence. The mansion's exterior is breathtaking. It, it is a display of the Gilded Age extravagance. A striking facade inspired by Italian Renaissance rises majestically against the backdrop of the Atlantic Ocean, creating a vision of grandeur that is awe-inspiring. The meticulously manicured gardens and sprawling grounds only add to the sense of splendor and sophistication. As I crossed the threshold, I found myself transported to a world of of luxury and refinement. Every detail, the interior of the breakers is a masterpiece of craftsmanship and artistic elegance. Imagine a fountain in your home. Every room is a symphony of sumptuous materials, intricate detailing, and exquisite furnishings. You simply must go.
This 17th century tapestry tells a tale of Alexander the Great. It was designed by a Flemish artist. One of my favorites is the Grand Staircase. Look at the beautiful, decadent red carpeting and the intricate details. Luxury at its best. And of course, do not forget to look up. This beautiful glass ceiling was created by the master of stained glass, the American John Lafarge. Now, uh, the Breakers had 15 bedrooms for family and friends on the second and third floors of the Breakers. Now, you may have noticed that the rooms seem much more subtle than the grandiose downstairs. The rooms on the second floor were designed by Ogden Codman, who was very understated and, and elegant in his style. Now I ask you, how many bathrooms does your summer cottage have? This home had 20. This bathtub was carved from one single slab of marble. It was based on a Roman sarcophagus. Imagine. Now, you may have noticed many of these telephones in the Breakers Mansion. Many of these of telephones were used as an intercom system throughout the home. The Breakers Mansion did have functional telephones, not merely intercoms. During the time of the Breakers in the 19th century, telephones were becoming increasingly common in the affluent households especially those owned by the families like the Vanderbilts, who were among the wealthiest in America. These telephones would have been connected to telephone lines and allowed for communication with individuals outside the mansion, as well as between different rooms within the mansion and the servant quarters. They were not solely used for internal communications like intercoms, but rather served as a means of communication throughout the home and the world. As we approach the servant quarters in the Breaker's Kitchen, the Breaker's Kitchen was in a separate wing of the house, especially because Mr. Vanderbilt wanted to make sure that the new kitchen was safely away from the rest of the house in case there was a fire. This cast iron coal wood burning stove stretches 21 feet. Imagine the team of cooks needed to feed the Vanderbilts and their guests and all of the staff. Can you hear the sizzling meat, the porcelain dishes, the subtle conversations? Look at this amazing kitchen.
Now there is a gift from the Newport Preservation Society. You can visit the breakers yourself. And be sure to comment below if you have. And do, do subscribe, my dear friends. Do visit me again.